You might have seen recently some discussion about hacks of Copilot for Microsoft 365 that allow attackers to manipulate the responses you receive. This is really interesting research and organizations using Copilot or relying on any similar generative AI technology should understand that they potentially create a new vector for attack. So in this video, I'm going to dive into what has been discovered and consider it within the wider context of how you use tools like Copilot and train your team members to use them safely. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCoursey. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Co-Pilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more. Research like that that was shared by Michael Bargary, the CTO of Zenity Labs, including a couple of sessions at the recent Black Hat conference, is absolutely vital as we embark on this new AI-powered and LLM-driven age using products like Copilot. The purpose of this type of security research is to highlight those hidden weaknesses that exist in products, and it's entirely appropriate given the propensity for AI-ifying everything right now that these experts have turned their attention to those AI-centered products. Michael's research extends across a variety of issues with both Copilot for Microsoft 365 and Copilot Studio. And while I'll highlight the key findings here, I wholly recommend you take a look at all the resources he has shared, for which there are links down in the video description. He demonstrated that it's possible to poison the data Copilot relies upon by sending hidden text in emails that includes instructions for the LLM, which are then in turn used when responding to a user query, resulting in a malicious response. This approach can be further enhanced by driving traffic to a phishing site in response to a query, for example a user asking for the address of an admin site, by instructing Copilot within hidden text in the poisoned email to return the wrong response, the user can be directed to a website designed to look like the authentic admin portal, and then their login credentials can be extracted. From there, with access to the user's account, Copilot can continue to be used maliciously, using its data to help an attacker craft spear phishing content, and obviously, because of the capabilities of Copilot or other LLMs, with access to all a user's existing communications, that spear phishing attack can be made to seem really, really authentic. Additionally, and in my view most worryingly, it was also demonstrated that an attacker or even a malicious insider could use access to Copilot to obfuscate accessing sensitivity labeled data. In many ways, this is the most worrying finding as it highlights a capability to get around guardrails Microsoft has already put into place, rather than just amplifying the intrinsic nature of how LLMs work when reasoning over content. Lastly, there was a separate body of work that shows a whole host of potential vulnerabilities around public-facing custom copilots, and how, by there being options or defaults that weaken security, and potentially anyone being able to access them, they are a worrying vector for leaking data out of your organization. Again, this is only a light overview, and I strongly recommend you check out the whole body of work on these topics. However, I imagine that for most of you, there are two questions. Is Copilot safe? And what should be done about this? Before we dive into that, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. I think the big headline to take away from most of what was demonstrated in these examples is they are built upon users doing something that might seem logical, but actually shouldn't be recommended blindly trusting Copilot. Even if an outside attacker hasn't maliciously poisoned your data to make Copilot give you the wrong results, most of the organizations I work with have data that if not poisoned, instead is reaching the end of its use by date that can make Copilot's answers taste a little bad. Copilot is really good at creatively generating content or summarizing information sourced from the correct references. But just trusting blindly that it has independently found the right content without knowledge of the underlying cited documents is just not recommended. 
unless used as a condition to diligently check the source material Copilot is referring to, then errors can and will creep in. And this is a good reminder that the generative AI technologies we have today are in no way ready to be left to act in an unsupervised manner. In another example, Michael demonstrated a situation where an outside attacker poisoned financial data used by Copilot to subvert the process of making a wire transfer. The user asks Copilot for the wire information, but gets the wrong result, and in doing so the implication presumably is that this sort of attack might lead to a company to send funds to the wrong place using poisoned malicious account information. However, while this is a Copilot issue, it's also a much bigger issue of inadequate financial controls. Absolutely should no significant transfer ever leave a company based just on a response from Copilot, but nor should it based on one person pulling some data out of an Excel spreadsheet. If you don't have processes to have multiple check steps on these types of transactions, then you are leaving yourself open to error, outside attack, or even malicious insiders. The inclusion of Copilot here is inconvenient, but should not break an otherwise robust financial process. The reality is that the effectiveness of using Copilot to pull out a specific fact, like an account number or an address, is entirely driven by the quality of your data. There are ways around this, for example building a Copilot plugin that is grounded solely on the agreed source of truth for a given type of fact. But unless you've done this, out of the box, Copilot's level of reliability in pulling facts out of your data has much more to do with how good your data is than it does to do with Copilot itself. Now let me be clear that there are technical issues for Microsoft to fix here. Allowing grounding content as a source for instructions carried out by the LLM is not what is expected and it seems like it should be a fairly basic responsible AI step to ensure the intent of the instruction sent to the LLM matches the instruction entered by the user. I would expect that this kind of intent matching would be something some of the lighter weight small language models that are being rolled out would be strong at, so such additional checks need not add significant cost or complexity. However, we cannot downplay the importance of properly trained users in mitigating emerging security threats. In the example of poisoning the address of a Microsoft admin portal, you would ask the question of why is the user not trained to see the warning signs of phishing? No single sign-on, no automatic writing of credentials by a password manager, not to mention that other controls like MFA or conditional access could well prevent downstream impact from this sort of attack. Just as you would not just click on a link presented in an email, you should not just believe a link just presented by Copilot. It may not be malicious, but it may be wrong. And unless users understand how a tool like Copilot generates its responses, it's easy to see how they might just trust this as magic rather than just a guess based on the best available information. I am often frustrated by seeing experts who should know better advocating tools like Copilot or ChatGPT for building content on projects or topics for which the implication is that the user knows very little about. While this might lead to an impressive couple of pages of text being generated, unless we check that users have the skills and underlying knowledge on how generative AI works to take that output and check it for authenticity, we've just shown them how to do a risky magic trick where the chance of success is some amount less than 100%. A warning that AI can be wrong is all good, but unless we ensure users understand what that wrongness can look like and how to mitigate it, we're just sticking a warning label on a product knowing most users will probably ignore it. The path to effectively adopt generative AI in your business grows in complexity as issues like this raise their heads and show us new priorities we should be focusing on. Whether you are new to Copilot, needing help with an ongoing adoption, or looking for a strategic advisory partner to help you achieve the most with these technologies in the future, I welcome you reaching out to learn how my services can deliver value to you. Check out the links below where you can get started with a no obligation introductory call to find out if my services are a good fit for what you need and to see other materials I have available such as my currently free AI adoption overview course for executives. Let's consider another technology that's been around a lot longer than generative AI, email. In most daily use, email is helpful and safe, 
but it's also arguably the primary vector of attack on our IT systems. And despite huge advances in technology to help us harden email systems, one of the most important defences for issues such as phishing or spear phishing or business email compromise is user training. Thinking here about commercial services like Know Before that many organisations work with, but also other ongoing training within your organisation. What we see from these potential attacks on Copilot for Microsoft 365 is probably the start of a similar journey. Microsoft or others can work to harden Copilot, and particularly in issues such as sensitivity labeling not working properly with Copilot, this should be a priority. But the likelihood is that our primary defense now and into the foreseeable future will be how our teams use these tools and how they understand how to keep themselves safe. Understanding how much trust should be given to different AI systems based on how they work is essential. Users need to also understand what issues look like. Nowadays, not many people would be taken in by a supposed Nigerian prince by email. But the reason for that being a fairly ubiquitous shorthand for email scams is that for a long while, it was one that worked. Over time, we will probably become much more sophisticated in sniffing out AI wrongness or hallucination too. But right now, it's early days. If you get nothing else from this video, then I think there are two important takeaways. First, whether your data has been maliciously poisoned or not, there are probably issues with the data available to Copilot for Microsoft 365, and it's likely to just be the norm that these tools work with imperfect data that drive imperfect answers. Second, if you're allowing your users to think of AI as magic, rather than giving them good training to understand how it's working and how it can be wrong, you're taking a big risk. A pretty similar risk to if you just allow your users to use email without any training or guidance on looking out for scams. What are your takeaways from these issues? Have you lost your trust in Copilot and other generative AI? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end and putting up with my rather raspy voice I'm currently recovering from COVID. Until the next video, bye bye.